Yay! I've got so many rulers. I want to show you guys rulers. It's Tooltip Tuesday. We've got rulers. Let me show you my rulers. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> How are you? It's me, Jennifer from Little Metal Foxes. And I've got Julia. Also from Little Metal Foxes. And Helen. Also from Little Metal Foxes. Hi, everybody. Um, so, yeah, we're coming at you live. Jump in and ask us questions if you like um, in the chat below. Um, make sure to hit that like button because we like likes. We like likes. We're sending likes out to you. So you should. There you go. Send it back to us. All right. Also from Little Metal. So, um, one of the things that I want to share with you guys is um, something that, that happened to me uh, at work. <clears throat> um, and um, my my boss, Billy, uh, had um, a plastic ruler. He handed me to measure something. And I'm like, this is a jewelry studio. Don't you have a metal ruler to do this? And it was something that really kind of needed a metal ruler. And he was like, no, that's what's wrong with it. It's my favorite ruler. <laughs> I was like, I was like, that's great. Bless your heart. But, Bless your heart um, that you've had this since great since middle school. But um, yeah. this is his favorite ruler. And I'm like, I get that. It's a special ruler. I said, but what I really need. You should take it home where it couldn't, where it doesn't run any risk of being damaged or, you know, yeah, destroyed. Yeah. So, yeah. but I was like, what we really need are metal rulers. And he was like, he's like, oh yeah. Okay. I said, because, you know, they don't scratch or, you know, warp or melt in the jewelry studio. Nick or chip. Yeah. So. Well, at least like, not Nick easily. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you've ever tried to cut a straight line with an exacto and a plastic ruler, get break out the band-aids because that's going to be a disaster so anyway i you know have, have always recommended metal rulers for the studio and i know everybody probably has you know that metal ruler like this that has cork on the back and you know as yep everybody got everybody got one and these are great for working especially with like paper and things like that because it keeps it from slipping on the surface with the cork and um but the it lifts up the edge just slightly so that if you're working with ink you don't get a bleed on your paper if you're trying Which, to you know it's not a trivial problem if you're working with ink and this is the best tool uh, situation right ever um if you're trying to get like scribe a straight a really exact straight line turn it over so your cork isn't raising it up and and you're not like burying your edge so turn it over so you've got a flat edge. But I got to tell you, man, having a good little six inch ruler that's got inches on one side and millimeters on the other is the way to go. You know, even, you know, now these, these are made out of wood. <laughs> well, at least, at least they have a metal edge. They do. Yeah. At but least they have a metal edge, so they're not going to cut. If you're using it with the X-Acto knife, it works fine. However, it still has a slightly raised edge because the metal edge is embedded into the edge of the wood. And so, again, fabulous for not having your lines bleed if you're working in ink, but not so great for scribing a really exactly straight line because the scribe can wobble. Yeah. This is not a machined edge on yeah. these kinds of rulers. I have a metal edge on this one, too. Yeah. And so this can just yeah. you know, over time get worn down, pushed into the ruler, break off. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of things. But this is not, you know, designed for the kind of exact work that you're usually it's doing. It's not a precision tool. Right. right. So, Julie, you've got um, a ruler that was recommended actually by one of our students. One of our students, yeah. So Valerie, shout out to Valerie Conaway in Georgia. Um, she turned me on to this little guy, which is tiny. It's uh, It's like four inches by three three inches right so it's four inches along here and three inches this way and it has millimeters on the back centimeters and millimeters on the back but i love that it's a square that's a you know it's nice to have a square that's this tiny and flat but in addition to that i find it really useful for finding the center of a circle but i have to have in order to do that i also have to have my stainless steel six inch ruler and my particular stainless steel six inch ruler has millimeters and inches on the same side right which is fine it has like some other data on the back which i never use so did you want me to just show how i how i do that 
One. Go, yeah, show us when you find the center on a circle. Okay, let me get my thing out here. Mine has like decimal equivalents on the back. Yeah, I think that's what this has. It has decimal equivalents on the back uh, for inch fractions and fractions of an inch, which is great. But, you know, here I can show you in a second when this comes up. So that's really helpful if you're ordering uh, like machine parts that have, you know, that are in. Right. Here we are in the Imperium where, you know, we still have Imperial um, measurements. And so this this column here is inch fractions, right? You can see seven sixty-fourths, one eighth, nine sixty-fourths, and then this is the decimal equivalent. So it's going to be one eighth is 0. 0.125. So that can be helpful to have that here. I just don't use inch fractions as much. Um, I mean, the other thing that I love about yeah, this metal right. ruler, as opposed to the one with the cork, um, well, I have another one, is that it goes all the way to zero, right? So if I'm measuring something and I'm trying to cut clip it off i'm not dealing with the fact i have another ruler that i'll show you what i mean um yeah that yeah. that there's a that there's a gap um here this is this is what i'm talking about so from the standpoint of precision this is why metal rulers are made like this that have or any ruler it's made so that it has a little bit of extra here because then if the edge of the ruler gets worn you can you still have the zero Right. The problem with this is that because this part is not part of the measurement, if I'm if I'm trying to measure a one inch long piece of metal and, and cut it off, you know, clip it off, I'm not I'm gonna get one inch and an eighth, basically. Whereas with this one, I can clip right at the edge and I will get exactly one inch or exactly three millimeters centimeters or whatever I want. Right. So I like to have a ruler that does not have this extra on here. But I was going to show you how I do the find the center of a circle. Get this in. So if you have a disc, right? This is just a little disc of silver. You want to stick it up. You need to be on something flat, and you want to push it up into the V shape. And then you're going to put this on top of it. And the goal is to put it so that this ruler is lined up perfectly with this point and this point because that will have it at a 45 degree angle. So what I usually do is like stick my awl or scribe or whatever in the center there, because that will help me get it lined up properly and then line up the other side over here. And then you, I kind of see how I have four fingers, right? I have two fingers on this ruler and two fingers on this ruler. Then I'm gonna push this down in like so, and let me make sure everything is lined up. And then I'm going to scribe from the outside in, because if I scribe this way, it'll push this thing out of the way, right? So I got to get my rulers all lined up and in position. Just to go in a little bit. And then I scribe this way. And that way I get a line perfectly down the center of my disc. Then if I rotate it, and it doesn't matter how much you rotate it, sorry, this is, but if you rotate it a little bit, at least a little bit, and then do it again. So again, now, even my for scribe to pull in half, that's a tricky thing too. Huh? Even for being able to divide your circle in half, that can be tricky as that well. That can be tricky as well, right? Um, so again, I'm gonna set everything up, get it all lined up, and then get all my fingers in place, like my four, it's like a four-legged stool holding all the rulers down so that nothing shifts. And then, uh, whoops, it just shifted a little bit. I think it's okay. And then I'm going to draw another scribe line. And now you can see where those two cross is perfectly the center of the circle. So then I can take a, a center punch or something and put a tiny divot right there. And then I can drill a hole exactly in the middle, right? Yeah. yeah. And if you are feeling like you may be off a little bit, even doing a third line. Right. You only have to have two to find the center, but a third one will help you, you know, just really pinpoint it. Um, but that to me is, you know, having a low tech, inexpensive, straight, I mean, it's like you should have a straight metal ruler in your studio anyway. You should have a scribe in your studio anyway. And your, your scribe, which is just a sewing needle in a Pin vise is an excellent scribe for this because it makes it, you can really see what you're doing. So the only thing you need to add is this guy. Um, 
and I got this on Amazon. So it's a, it's Zona. Some it's, 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 tools for center finding that you can get, but this is super accurate. This is actually as accurate, if not more accurate, and then right. it has other uses as well. So this is the Zona 37-434. Mm -hmm. um and it, it's it's nice little ruler you know it wasn't very expensive and like i said it works really, really well uh, the scale is a big part of it right you can get you know t squares and l squares and stuff but you know the gra drafting ones are really big and so they're just really unwieldy at the scale we're working um i learned this right. trick from you to pull this apart right yeah and this is one of my favorite tricks that I like to tell my students. And I learned this from Jennifer, just pulling this apart. And then this little guy is a perfect little T-square, but it also has measurements on it as well because it, it has um, yeah. markings on it too. So, you know, but again, scale is everything. Having something be the, the size that of the thing you're working on. You know, you're not dealing with a yardstick and you're trying to deal with something that's like two inches. It's, it's well, just, you know. let me show you one of my favorite go-tos here because this is, um, again, something that, you know, in that discussion of, you know, measuring things at Baleen, um, this is the thing that has been my go-to. And I've got- I got one of these because of you too, right? You, you have been spoiled. an inspiration in terms of measuring. Yeah, I'm really super spoiled by this now because- um, I've got, this is a metal ruler that has an adhesive back and it's, it's relatively thin and it is fantastic to add to your bench because if you've got, you know, little pieces that might roll away, this, you know, it has like a little teeny tiny lip on it, mm -hmm. that, you know, small beads and things from rolling off or wire from rolling away, but it's just tall enough that it will, you can put your wire up against it. And because it's fixed to your, the edge of your bench, right, right, really easy to kind of get your wire right up against it and do your cuts. So and do your little, just do your little clips right against it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I'm, you know, measuring, you know, for a half an inch, I can get my flush cutters and right on that half inch mark and clip and it. Do. There you and go. Know that that's going to be super accurate, right? Um, the other thing is that for stuff like chain, this. Mm -hmm. one, really great because uh, especially if you're working with a lot of chain and doing a lot of measuring it can be yeah. really hard to get the chain you know laid down you know so that you right. can... I mean look how fine that is that's just annoyingly tiny exactly yeah so if you're doing a lot of like chain measuring and you're like okay I just need like an inch of chain for these earrings you can you know use this and not have to worry about like holding the ruler down but you know having oops, right ones I usually use for this here we go um but that way you can kind of do that and the other thing I do if I'm measuring like to a length I might have like a mark so I know you know where my start line is where my cut line is and where I'm finishing mm -hmm. so way I can kind of go okay well I need to measure to there and then I'm going to do my cut and and then I'm going to measure to there and then mm -hmm. the side and do my cut. So for measuring stuff like chain, this mm -hmm. is real fast. So if I'm doing like little measurements, um, you know, just you know, measuring for one inch and then having mm -hmm. it one inch so I can just hold it on either side of the chain and go. So for for you know, just a simple thing like this that you can get from Rio or from Amazon or someplace, mm -hmm. having one that's attached to your bench is really critical. But the other thing that I love is using a needle in a pen vise uh, to do my scribing. You know, if I'm doing mm -hmm. it, right, it's so sharp and flexible, they will get right up to that edge. And you can really see it, right? So the disadvantage of the, I love my scribe that has like a tungsten carbide tip. It's really, it's very sharp and accurate, but it, it's, it's pencil size. And so it's kind of fat at the tip right. and it's hard to see it. So having a, a pin vise with a needle, you can really see the well and you can see it kind of flex right because the point is is not at at the point mm -hmm. i can and pushing away from my my metal edge i can get right up against that mm -hmm. that line yeah so really super accurate when i'm using like this you know with you know a metal ruler so mm -hmm. and yeah i so. love tech again right like 
that has yep. it's on both sides so it doesn't matter which way i flip it and then that that one has the the decimals the decimals and inch fractions yeah which mine does too it looks like your ruler your six inch ruler and mine are are similar mine's an alvin 1533 um so, it's usa yeah so but and mine came with a little pocket clip which i i i just took it off and dumped it into the a tin because it's like i don't the pocket clip just gets in my way because it holds it up off the surface that's that's for the the scientist nerds who want to put it in a pocket right i don't need to do that but but the thing that's that's really important i think about the decimals here is that if you're ordering a uh, wire sheet you know and things anything that's measured in you know decimals it's mm -hmm of you know inches uh, this is going to give you a better you know idea if you're but that's only decimals of an inch it's only fractions of an inch so the back sides of these two rulers are only in imperial measurements um not in in millimeters which is okay it's just you know fyi the rest of the world has moved the f on and is using the metric system which i mean we're 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 in not terribly great company. The U.S. and like some dictatorship somewhere are the only ones that are still using imperial so, measurements. So yes, move on to decimals, people. Yeah, <laughs> and millimeters. But um, but yeah, get if you don't already have a metal ruler, get one. I mean, they're not expensive and a T square, and uh, and you're good to go, right? Yeah, hey, I know. Great. Do do us a favor. Hit the like button and uh, subscribe and you'll know when we're live and doing our tool tips every Tuesday usually. But we also have other things that we add uh, as far as free content, um, interviews with people, um, studio tours and all kinds of great stuff. So make sure you subscribe and follow us and see what's coming up soon. Oh, then you'll know when new stuff drops. That's right. All right, everybody. Have a great week. We'll see you next week on Tool Tip Tuesday.